In this lesson, we're going to take a look at one-way ANOVA, and we're going to focus on the example that's in handout three from our course pack. If you're not a, a student in our engineering stats program, hopefully you'll find this video helpful in terms of using MATLAB to do one-way ANOVA. The scenario is basically we're a manufacturer of paper that's used for making grocery bags, and we suspect that the Hardwood concentration in the pulp is something that influences the tinsel strength of the, the paper bags. And so we want to test and determine if um, there is a difference in the tinsel strength between the different concentrations. And we're going to use 5%, 10%, 15%, and 20%. And um, and then we're taking uh, six specimens from each concentration percentage and then uh, putting that in a tinsel strength tester to see um, how strong those things are. So one of the first things that we'll have to start off with is getting our data into uh, MATLAB. And I have the data saved in a CSV file, so we'll go ahead and we'll call that. We're just going to call the, the data strength. And when we run that command line, It'll generate our table. It'll pull in the CSV file and then generate the table. And when we get this, we can see that it, there's some warnings here. I'll just explain what the warnings are. Um, in the data, um, the headers right here, the variable names, it said hardwood concentration, 5% hardwood concentration, 10% hardwood concentration 15%, hardwood concentration 20%. So the percent sign is an illegal character and also spaces in the variable names are illegal characters. So it's adjusting those. So that's what the warning is really telling us right there. Now to do one-way ANOVA, we can't use a table to do one-way ANOVA. What we have to do is strip away um, the headers and all the variable names and the headers and then also these row uh, names right here and only have the data that's left over. So we're gonna create a matrix next. I'm going to call this a strength matrix. And then I'm going to tell it I'm pulling the table strength in to uh, do this. And we're going to use the curly, br curly brackets. And then you just go colon, comma, and colon. And what that's saying is we're going to strip out all the data in here that's arranged in the inside of the matrix. And then I'll go ahead and run that. You can see it generates a six by four matrix. All the data is intact from that table and now it's in a matrix format so we can do some additional stuff with that. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a separate object that identifies what the headers are in there uh, because when I run the one-way ANOVA, I want that to show up in the output. So I'm gonna say these are the treatments And then I'm going to use the curly brackets. And then these are going to be characters. So um, I want to make sure that I, I type those in there. So we had 5%. And I'm encompassing those or encasing those in apostrophes. And then we have 10%. And once I have the percentages typed in, I can go ahead and run that. And that uh, generates a character output right there. It shows us what those values are. It's a one by four, and those are cells right there. So now we're ready to run the one-way ANOVA. And so this is called ANOVA1. That's the name of our function. We're gonna have to tell it what data we're gonna use. Again, this has to be a matrix. Um, so we're gonna use that strength matrix. And then the other argument that we're gonna put in here are the treatments. So that way it shows up on uh, some of the output, which you'll see in just a minute. So I have that inputted into the function. I'll go ahead and run that. And you can see it's generating our ANOVA table right here. The columns are really the treatments or the factors, depending on the uh, software you're using. Typically, this is um, labeled treatment factors or between groups and then error or within groups is what the next one is. So the first column are the sums of squares for each of those respective things. The next column are the degrees of freedom. And then we have the mean square. Remember the mean square we can calculate if we have the sum of squares and degrees of freedom. All we do is take the sum of squares for the columns and divide that by the degrees of freedom for the columns and that'll give us our mean square. And similarly, um, if we add up the sum of squares for the columns, sum of square for the error, that's gonna give us the sum of square total. And then same thing with the degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom columns plus the degrees of freedom error equals the degrees of freedom total. And then this 
mean square error right here is really just the um, sum of squares of 130 divided by 20 and that gives us that value and if you recall the F statistic is the ratio of those two variances. The mean square is really just a variance of the treatments and the variance of the errors. So if you take 127.59, divide that by 6.508, that gives us 19.61. And then we'd have to use a probability density function in order to figure out what the probability is that's associated with this value. This probability happens to be 3.59 times 10 to the negative 6. So this is a very small probability. Um, we'd move the decimal place over six places from where it is to actually see what that value is. And when we look at the probability, since it's really small, that means there's a significant difference between um, the different uh, treatments that we have in terms of the mean value, the population means of those things. So there is some sort of difference between those things. Now down below, this does what's called a notched box plot. I'm going to explain this in just a second uh, so you can see this. Uh, certainly you can add things like labels and, and everything in here. Um, notice uh, when we did this uh, treatments right here in the ANOVA function, the treatments that we um, identified show up on this uh, notched box plot right here, which is really nice to be able to see and identify which one of those box plots are which. So the notched, notched box plot gives a bunch of uh, information on here. Number one, it gives the five number summary. If you recall with box plots, this would be our minimum value right there. This line right here would be our first quartile. This would be our median value, the red line. The next line up is our third quartile. And then this is our maximum value. And you're probably wondering why we have these really weird notches right here. Well, that actually gives, um, it gives a comparison interval on the median. And the way that it calculates that is the median plus or minus 1.57 times the interquartile range divided by the square root of n. So it's, it's essentially a confidence interval for the median is what we're looking at right there. Um, and it allows us to get a little bit more of analysis and a little bit more comparison. So now going back to this example, if you're looking at the the parallel box plots right here or the parallel notched box plots right here, you can see that this 20% concentration is quite a bit larger than all the other ones. The other thing is when we look at this, uh, remember when we're doing ANOVA, we're trying to determine if the mean at 5% and the mean at 10%, the mean at 15% and the mean at 20% for the tinsel strength, we're trying to determine if those population means are equal to each other. And so in the box plot, if they were equal to each other, these box plots would all be relatively in line with each other in terms of the interquartile range and also the median value. Since we have um, the box plots at different heights in terms of their interquartile range and also their median values, we can see that there's clearly a difference in the, the treatment in terms of that concentration percentage. So you can visually see that within the box plots and you can see which one gives the greatest tinsel strength and which one gives the least amount of tinsel strength. You can also check things like variability like the range and the interquartile range on these as well. So hopefully that helps you out with doing one-way ANOVA on uh, MATLAB and um, we'll have future videos that go more into detail on some of the other topics related to statistics in MATLAB.